appointment of the chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of the statutory committees. The next item then on the paper is the appointment of those positions in accordance with the procedure set out in Standing Order 48. So I'll ask the nominating officer of each political party in the order required by the formula contained in Standing Order 48 to select an available statutory committee and nominate a person who is a member of his or her party and of the Assembly to be its chairperson or deputy chairperson. And I would remind parties of the requirement of Standing Order 48, bracket 5, that nominating officers shall prefer committees in which they do not have a party interest over those in which they do. For the avoidance of doubt, this means I will expect parties to refrain as far as possible from selecting committees that coincide with the ministerial offices held by their party. And I would now call on uh, Arling Foster, as nominating officer uh, of the party which has the highest figure under the formula, to select an available statutory committee and nominate a person who is a member of her party and of the Assembly to be a chairperson or deputy chairperson. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I choose the Justice Committee and <coughs> I nominate Paul Given to be the chairman. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Yes, Mr Speaker. Thank you. I announce the appointment of Mr Paul Given, the chairperson of the Justice Committee. I call on John O'Dowd to select an available statutory committee and nominate a member to be its chairperson or deputy chairperson. Gormi, uh, I can call you. We select the Economy Committee and appoint Kiva Archibald to that post. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I am, can call you. I announce the appointment of Keeva Archibald as chairperson of the Economy Committee. I call again on Arlene Foster to select and nominate. I select the uh, Communities Department and uh, select Paula Bradley as chair. Thank you. Is the member willing to take up the office for which she has been nominated? I do, Mr. Speaker. Announce the appointment of Paula Bradley as chairperson of the Communities Committee. I call again on John O'Dowd to select and nominate. Gormay uh, can call you. We select the Health Committee and appoint Colin Gildernew to that post. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Tommy, I am. Can call you. Gormay I. Announce the appointment of Colm Gildernew as the chairperson of the Health Committee. I now call on Ms. Dolores Kelly to select an available statutory committee and nominate a member to be its chairperson or deputy chairperson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We select the executive office and I nominate uh, Colin McGrath as chair. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I am, Mr. Speaker. I announce the appointment of Colin McGrath as chairperson of the executive committee. I now call on Steve Aiken to select an available statutory committee and nominate a member to be its chairperson or deputy chairperson. Mr. Speaker, just in, in line with orders, I will be making a nomination. Is that uh, okay? Has that been cl clarified already? So you're saying you're making a nomination? I, I, I sent a letter in this morning. Did we receive that letter? Okay. Can I just pause for a moment or two? I don't have sight of that. It's just that we don't have sight of that letter. Was it first, was it first class post or second class post? have to take a raise just for a minute or two members. Sorry about this, it's a legal requirement.
Okay, members, we'll, uh, we, can, we can recommence. Okay. Again, Steve, could you confirm that you have conferred to Robbie the responsibility as nominating officer? Uh, for this one thing, Mr. Speaker, I have indeed conferred the responsibility to my Thank chief whip, Robbie Butler. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, so I don't need to rehearse the first. So I now call on Robbie Butler to uh, select and nominate. My, my apologies, Mr. Speaker, for I, I delivered it to the wrong office. I probably wouldn't make a good post person. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I, we take the uh, committee for finance and I nominate Steve Aitken. Yeah. <laughs> Order now. Okay, is, is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? <laughs> Delighted to, Chief. Okay. I announce the appointment of Steve Aitken as the chairperson of the finance committee. I call again on Arlene Foster to select the nominate. Uh, speaker, I select the Committee for Infrastructure and I nominate Michelle McElveen as chairperson. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I am, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I announce the appointment of Michelle McElveen of, as chairperson of the Infrastructure Committee. I call again on John O'Dowd to select the nominate. Uh, we select the Environment, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee and we appoint Declan McAleer. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Um, uh, Ta, yes, Concordia. Uh, I announce the appointment of Declan uh, yeah. So I announce the appointment of Declan McAleer as chairperson of the Environment, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee. The, I now call on Kelly Armstrong to select and nominate, please. Mr. Speaker, we choose the Department of Education and Mr. Chris Little to be chair of that, of that committee. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Yes, Mr. Speaker. I announce the appointment of Chris Little as the chairperson of the Education Committee. I call on Arling Foster to select and nominate. I select uh, the Finance Committee and I nominate Paul Frew as the Vice Chair. Is that not done? Oh, is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Mr. Speaker. Okay, so I nominate the appointment of Paul Frew as the Vice Chairperson of the Finance Committee. I call on John O'Dowd to select a nominate. Uh, we select the Vice Chair of the Justice Committee and appoint Linda Dillon to that position. Is the member willing to take up the office for which she has been nominated? I am, Concordia. I announce the appointment of Linda Dillon as the Vice Chairperson of the Justice Committee. I call on Dolores Kelly to select a nominate. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we select the Department of the Economy Chair, uh, uh, Vice Chair Sinead McLaughlin. Is the member willing to take up the office for which she has been nominated? I am, Chair. Uh, speaker. Okay, I announce the appointment of Sinead McLaughlin as the Vice Chair of the Department of the Economy Committee. I call on Arlene Foster to select the nominate. I select the Health Committee and I nominate Gary Middleton as the Vice Chair. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I am, Mr. Speaker. I announce the appointment of Gary Middleton as the Vice Chair of the Health Committee. I call on John O'Dowd to select a nominate. From the can call you, we select the Vice Chair of Education Committee and appoint Karen Mull. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Yes, can. I announce the appointment of Karen Mullen as the Vice Chairperson of the Education Committee. I call on Robbie Butler to select a nominate. I've lost our list. <laughs> we, we, we select the Executive Office and Mike Nesbitt. Okay. Sorry, sorry. So, Mr. 
Thank you. 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 Thank I call on Arlene Foster to select and nominate. I choose the Committee for Infrastructure and I appoint David Hilditch as the Vice Chair. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Yes, Mr. Schmigger. I announce the appointment of David Hilditch as the Vice Chairperson of the Infrastructure Committee. I call on John O'Dowd to select and nominate. Uh, <coughs> We select the Vice Chair of the Environment, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee and appoint Philip McGuigan. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I yes. announce the appointment of Philip McGuigan as the Vice Chairperson of the, of the Environment, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee. I call on Kelly Armstrong to select and nominate. Mr. Speaker, for the final Vice Chair and um, Department of Communities and the nomination for the Alliance Party is myself, Kelly Armstrong. Is the member willing to accept the nomination for us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, sort of, I sort of thought you would. All right, so uh, I now announce the appointment of uh, Ms. Kelly Armstrong as the Vice Chairperson of the Communities Committee. That concludes. Members, the appointment of the chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of statutory uh, committees. So, 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 so. Moving on now to the uh, appointment of chairs and deputy chairs of standing committees. Nick. That is the next item on the order paper. Uh, I am required to supervise the appointment of a chairperson and deputy chairperson to each standing committee other than the business committee in accordance with the procedure set out in Standing Orders 51. I shall ask a nominating officer for each political party in the order required by the formula contained in Standing Order 51, bracket 2, uh, in, to select an available standing committee and nominate a person who is a member of his or her party and of the Assembly to be chairperson or deputy chairperson. Uh, before we commence, I do remind members of the requirement of Standing Order 56, bracket 3, that neither the chairperson nor deputy chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee shall be a member of the same political party as the Minister of Finance or of any junior minister appointed to the Department of Finance. Uh, I now call on Ms Arling Foster as nominating officer of the party, which has the highest figure under the formula laid down in standing orders to select an available standing committee and nominate a person who is a member of, his, of her party and of the Assembly to be chairperson or deputy chairperson of it. Of it. Thank you. I choose the Public Accounts Committee and I nominate William Humphrey as chair. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I announce the appointment of William Humphreys as the Chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee. I call on John O'Dowd to select an available standing committee and nominate a person who is a member of his party and of the Assembly to be chairperson or deputy chairperson of it. Uh, we select the Standards and Privileges Committee and appoint Sinead Annas. Sinead, sorry. Sorry, uh, appoint Sinead Annas. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated. I am, can I announce the appointment of Sinead Annis as the uh, chairperson of the Standards and Privileges Committee. Colin Arling Foster to select and nominate. Uh, I select the AERC Committee and nominate Mervyn Storey as chairperson. I understand Mr Storey has submitted a letter to the Speaker's office because unfortunately he has a family bereavement and cannot be here today. Thank you, Ms. Foster. Um, I have received correspondence from Mervyn Story that he is willing to accept the nomination, and I therefore announce the appointment of Mervyn Story as chairperson of the Assembly and Executive Review Committee. And could I, on behalf of the Assembly, extend our condolences to Mervyn uh, on the death of his father? Okay. Thank you very much, members. Okay. I call on John O'Dowd to select the nominate. Uh, can call you. We select the Procedures Committee and appoint Carol Nicolum. 
Is the member willing to take up the office for which she has been nominated? Glackham, I, I accept. Hang I announce the appointment of Carol Neekillen as chairperson of the Procedures Committee. I call on Dolores Kelly to select and nominate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We select Audit Committee and nominate Daniel McCross. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I do, Mr. Speaker. I announce the appointment of Daniel McCrossan as the chairperson of the Audit Committee. And I call on Steve Egan to select an available standing committee and nominate a person here for that post. Uh, we nominate uh, Roy Beggs to the Public Accounts Committee. That's the vice chair, am I right? Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I am willing to take up the office of vice chair. Thank you. I announce, I announce the appointment of Roy Beggs, the vice chairperson of the, Roy, of the Public Accounts Committee. I call on Arlene Foster to select and nominate. I select the Standards and Privileges Committee and I nominate William Irwin as vice chair. Who's William Irwin? Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I am, Mr. Speaker. I announce the appointment of William Irwin, Irwin of, as the Vice Chairperson of the Standards and Privileges Committee. I call on John O'Dowd to select the nominate. We, are can call you. we select the Vice Chair of the Assembly Executive and Review Committee and appoint Melissa McHugh. The member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Thank you. I announce the appointment of Melissa McHugh as the uh, Vice Chairperson of the IRC. I call on Kelly Armstrong to select and nominate. Mr. Speaker, we, we choose the Audit Committee and appoint Andrew Muir as Vice Chair. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? I, I am. <clears throat> I announce the appointment of Andrew Muir as the Vice Chairperson of the Audit Committee. I call on Arlene Foster to select and nominate. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Procedures Committee is what is left, and I nominate Tom Buchanan as Vice Chair. Is the member willing to take up the office for which he has been nominated? Thank you. I announce the appointment of Tom Buchanan as Vice Chair of the Procedures Committee. Thank you, members. That concludes the appointment of chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of standing uh, committees. Move on to the next item, which is suspension of standing order 79-2. The first item of business is a motion to suspend standing order 79-2. Clerk, please read the motion. 